But anyway, let's get the second mission done, decoy. And this one's really, really fun. A lesson in business, my friend. If you have a unique commodity, the world and his wife will try to wrestle it from your grasp, even if they have little understanding as to its true value. SWAT teams have cordoned off the area around my associate in the package. Get over there, pick up the van, and act as a decoy. Keep them busy, and he should make good his escape. So basically, I have to go all the way back to Shoreside Vale, get the security car, drive around, uh, I don't think the car goes in there, it's basically a decoy, obviously, hence the mission name. So the police think that I've got it when I haven't, so I've just got to keep them busy while the real uh, the real cargo gets away. So nice and simple. Let's drive on back. So yeah, as I mentioned, you've got to remember like where everything is. So I know that this way is the way to the airport now because I had to force myself to remember and try and get across the bridges because for Expresso to go you need to know where you're going uh, you need to know the best routes or the right I can't get the words out the right routes um, I got a little bit sort of flustered towards the airport the little roads that go in between and things I found it very confusing but unfortunately you can't get away from doing that mission you have to do it unless you cheat and I'm not going to cheat I'm going to do everything legitimately um, it's just I just hate the time some of the time missions on here it can be a little too much a little bit like overkill but I suppose that's the name of the game and you do get that sense of achievement when you've done the mission okay Shoreside Vale here we are again literally just got to drive around for a bit so it's a nice a nice break from the madness I suppose we're just going to go back up to Pike Creek, I believe, and just uh, pick up the van. Okay. Right, we'll go this way. I don't want to bang into the police officer, because sometimes they're just there. Uh, they're there to catch you out, so it's like you've got to be really careful not to alert them to your attention. I guess maybe they're around because of the package maybe maybe that's why they're there so just pause it for a brief minute I think maybe there's an unusual amount of police around that could be the reason but once I do this mission then that'll be good everything done for Donald and then it's on to Ray who uh, whose mission is really difficult. I find Marked Man to be oh, just stressful because you can't get across that bridge. You have to use uh, another method. Luckily I went online, went onto YouTube, my favorite resource in the world, and there's a really great Let's Player who he showed you the easy way to do it, let's put it that way, because it's like you can't go the conventional way. Anyway, let's get this uh, security car and let's keep the police busy and try and complete the mission. As you can see, I'm in good shape. I've got uh, armor, full health, weapons. What does it say? Now lead the cops away from the warehouse. So that's literally all I've got to do. How, many, how much? Oh yeah, I've got three minutes to do it. Great, I feel like I've run an episode of the Crystal Maze. Okay, you have three minutes to find the crystal. I think I've got a tune coming on. Anyone remember Richard O'Brien on the Crystal Maze? Crystal Maze is just the greatest show ever made. I mean, like, I'm just addicted to it. Um, the old ones. I do like the new ones with Richard Ayoade. And, and um, I wasn't a big fan of, what's his name? Ed Tudor Paul. Didn't really float my boat, to be honest. Um, I didn't find him that interesting. I'm sure he's a really interesting bloke, but he just didn't suit the Crystal Maze format for me. Uh, and he'd basically end each episode. And he'd say, keep rocking. I was never quite sure what his character was supposed to be, whereas Richard O'Brien was like, he was like the perfect host because he could ad-lib. You know, he'd done a lot of theatre and stage work so he could think on his feet and he'd just come up with some of the most random things ever. You know, and he's just so funny and charming and, you know, he'd make, he'd make the show like so entertaining. 
So yeah, I just love the Crystal Maze. I'm very tempted to just watch, like, binge watch them, I think. Go on YouTube and just do a massive binge watch because there's devoted fans of the show. There's no way I'd ever get on in the Crystal Maze, to be honest. It's like, apparently you, um, before you, when you apply, you have to do, like, what they call a Mensa test. So they assess your intelligence and they... And from that, they tell you what games you'd be suitable to play. Skill, mystery, mental, physical, that sort of thing. And then it's kind of like, that's your category, and that's kind of the one you'd probably be best at. Or, maybe you get multiple categories. Anyway, I'm banging on about the Crystal Maze. I'm not even talking about this mission. I've got like, one minute to go now, and I'm just leading the police down the garden path. It's great, because I'm just, all I'm doing is literally going around the corner just driving around and they can't do a thing despite the fact that full stars they, they can do nothing so I've got 40 odd seconds it's all good and you get the damage meter as well so how cool is that you get the same damage meter that the oriental gentleman got so fantastic you can't go wrong there. I'm just a huge fan of retro game shows in, in general, just retro stuff. I mean, I was into retro stuff when it was current, to be honest. Um, I used to love some of the programs when I was a kid. There's one called Nightmare, K with a K, so as in night, a night, um, in which it was one of the first uh, video game shows in which, well, not a video game show, it was like there were these kids and one of them had a helmet and they had to walk around a dungeon. Now the dungeon was computer generated and it used advanced graphics at the time. Now only the people on the screen, only the people watching the screen could see the computer graphics. The kid in the helmet was actually in a warehouse and interacting with the other characters. So it was quite good really. So I love all that stuff. Anyway, I've passed this mission. <laughs> I'm just feeling very nostalgic today I suppose. And we're going to just carry on. So, we're halfway there. We've got to do a mission for Ray called Marked Man now. We've just got to drive him to the airport. As I said, uh, when you know how to do it, it's actually quite easy. Uh, but you have to go via an unconventional route through Liberty Campus, believe it or not. And I didn't even know that you could because um, I'm not very, uh, not very good at trying to work out the best routes. And you can't go the conventional route because it's blocked. Mind you, having said that, if I had the security van, maybe I could have got through. I don't know. Maybe if I had a stronger vehicle, like a tank, maybe that would have helped. I don't know. But anyway, let's save the game and let's uh, crack on. And then once that's done, we can crack on with uh, Espresso to go. So yeah quite a busy capture session to be honest I need to get more Secret of Mana and Final Fantasy done because that's been um, I don't think I've done any Final Fantasy in about a week or so I've just come off basically doing the um, the ice golem in the ice temple and I believe I've just unfreezed um, the one village and I do apologize for not knowing the name it's been such a long time so that's fast becoming one of my favourite RPGs, although it is a little bit like I suddenly decided to have a lot of random battles in it and things, so I'm like, oh. When I prefer to pick my battles, I don't like just the game saying, oh, you've got to fight now. I'm like, well, I want to figure out the dungeon. I don't want to fight now. <laughs> but unfortunately, you've got to. It's like, there's almost like no way out of it. Even if you run, the game still puts you in their position almost immediately you get about a second and then the game makes you fight again it's ridiculous but it's just the way that it is anyway um, I'm just going to show you this little bit while I'm here with Donald Love um, so he's disappeared and I don't get it because it's like nothing happens after this point he's just gone so I don't know I don't know what the deal is here
So he's just disappeared. I don't know whether uh, Rockstar were going to have another mission there. It seemed like it would have... I expected to find a note or something. Or some kind of, you know, saying we've got Donald Love, you know, if you don't come and pay this ransom, you know, we'll kill him. So I thought maybe you'd have to get him back. So I was a bit surprised to find that I didn't. And relieved as well because uh, the idea of a tough mission would have been a bit too much for me, I think. So, with that being said, we've got to get Ray out of the way as well, the undercover police officer. So, we're going to do that right now. And I'm in a Yakuza Stinger, quite a fast little car. And we'll head over to Bellevue. So, I'm getting to know the, the areas now because I've, I've drove. I can't get the words out because I've been driving around so much. So, it is becoming familiar, which is good. You know, I'm enjoying myself as well. It's kind of like I went into this thinking, oh, you know, I'll just do it bit by bit and I probably won't have to memorise too much, but unfortunately that's not the case. You become so immersed in the world of GTA 3. It's unbelievable. I, I mean, no joke, I've been even been having dreams about GTA 3. It's really weird because I've been playing it so much. Anyway, let's do Marked Man. You weren't followed. Good. This is it. I'm way over my head and I'm starting to drown here. The CIA seems to have a vested interest in Spank and they don't like a screwing with the cartel. I'm a marked man, so I'm getting out of here. Get me to my flight at the airport and I'll make it worth your while. Yeah, so basically we've got to get him to the airport. Um, now, I'm going to show you how to do it. It's really tricky. I think to work out at first because it's almost like what do I really have to go that way to do it it's kind of like unbelievable what where you have to go um, because I didn't even know you could go this way we have to head down this way and we have to go into Liberty Campus and we have to go through um, a, a station it's almost like a little station and we have to follow the train tracks it's mad it's just madness because it's like the last place you'd expect to to do it i'm sure there are other routes um but i was really struggling with this mission because i wasn't sure where to go so i had to literally look it up and this is it look at that we have to go right through liberty campus down to escalators to the train station basically so yeah we're going to follow the twain tracks basically twain and the twain sorry i'm in a face jacker kind of mood today is it phone jacker yeah there's a thing called um oh is it phone jacker and he, he, he does all these voices and prank calls and he phones up this guy and he's like hi dad he's got like a toy train shop he sells like model trains and all that all the rest of it he goes hi dad have you got the Hornby twain sets and the bloke goes yes have you got the man he goes which man you know, the depressed man who goes on the twain tracks, and he goes, the maintenance man. No, you know, the man, he's like really depressed. He goes on the tracks and gets hit by the twain. Oh my god, hilarious. <laughs> he's like, what about the pensioners who drive at the level crossing and don't realise that the twain's coming? Have you got some of those? It's really funny. Just laughing, like, just like, you know, comedy gold. <laughs> it's like, I don't, it takes a lot to make me laugh, to be honest, and, you know. Just some of the stuff he does. Uh, he's really funny. He does lots of different characters as well, like Terry Tibbs and uh, who else? Oh my god. George, I can do to Quango and <laughs> it's different, different characters really well. And Brian Bedondi, he does everything with a B, basically. He, he says everything with a B, so he says he's got Barrett's syndrome. Something. He's really good. Tending to be an art critic. Absolutely comedy gold. Anyway, check it out guys. Uh, we have made it to the airport using that nifty shortcut. So I want to say thank you to the YouTube community for uh, making those videos because I would never have been able to figure that out. So I can't take any credit for this mission because, um, you know, somebody already worked it out. So thank God for that get him to the airport so all I've got to do now to complete the mission though, there we go guys I got there in the end I'm a bit like British Rail I may take a while but I'll get there in the end you know 
I'm sorry to any GTA 3 purists who, you know, who, who probably could work this out straight away. I just, I haven't got that mentality to be honest because I, I always expect things to be harder than it is or I always expect everything to be like in the same area but it's really not. But anyway, it's a Staunton Island and once I realised that, I was like, no, to go all the way back and head over to the lock up we got some goodies anyway which will help us out later on so it's all good oh bloody police why can't they leave me alone right raise lock up is oh for god's sake it's frustrating man it's like again the traffic is like is impossible it's almost impossible not to get friggin hit in this game you're always going to take damage it's ridiculous right is it here I think this is it is this it yeah this is his lockup take care of my bulletproof patriot see you in Miami Ray there you go mission done nice and simple I think I've wrecked this Patriot straight away I don't know <laughs> by the looks of it right, so having done that now we'll go back and we'll save the game So I've just got to head on over. So that would have come in really useful. So unfortunately, I don't use it for whatever reason. I just think, oh, it's just another car. You know, I I didn't really. I I knew it was bulletproof, but it didn't really twig with me to actually keep it. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'll be all right. You know, it's bound to be another one. It's wrecked anyway, so I've, 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 like, I've literally had it for five seconds and it's wrecked. So it may be bulletproof, but it's not damage proof. Put it that way. We're going to go see Asuka now um, and crack on with this Expresso to Go mission. Um, I hate that. It's like I'll, I'll do a video, I'll try and edit it as best I can, and I always like make a ton of mistakes no matter how perfectly I try. There's always one or two things I just forget about. So. Apologies if it was a, a quick edit, but it had to be done, unfortunately. As you can see, the police are on my back. I'm like, it's just ridiculous. I want to get on with this mission. I'm not interested in frigging the police or like banging into vehicles. It's so stupid. Anyway, let's go and do it. Anyway, this is where we need to go to a Asuka on the construction site. Luckily, the police have stopped following me. So... We're going to go in now and we're going to do it. This mission is, uh, oh, it's a pain, put it that way. Uh. Miguel certainly has some of that famous Latin stamina. I'm quite exhausted. We underestimated Catalina's plans for Spank. It reaches far beyond the Yardies selling it on the street corners. The cartel have a front company, the Kappa Coffee House. They've been selling Spank through the street stalls. We have no choice but to put these drug stands out of operation. Smash ah. them to splinters! Ah. Here we are, guys. Expresso to go. Oh. As I said, everyone who's played this mission knows how difficult it is um i suppose one of the good things is as you can see it won't start until you um destroy the first stall there are nine stalls there's two in shoreside vale five where i currently am and there's two in portland now you are recommended to do either portland or the airport first get them done because they're out the area get one of them done then do Staunton Island then do whichever one's left that's the way that I would probably do it anyway that's kind of what I do so it's horrible 
I really don't like this mission at all because you need to remember exactly where you're going, you need a good knowledge of the roads, um, so you need to have driven them up and up and down them enough times to know which way to go. Um, it is possible to do this level if you've got a bit of luck. Mission, I should say, I don't know why I said level. Struggling with my words. So if you, it is possible to do it by luck, I suppose, but um, I would say that because the areas are just so big, there's lots of little side roads and there's probably lots of little shortcuts you can take as well. So what I am doing now is I'm driving around and I'm revealing the uh, blue dots on the map, the five blue dots but I'm probably only going to be destroying one on here and then I'm going to try and rush to Portland so the reason why I'm destroying one is because it makes it easy for when I come back because when I come back there should only be four rather than five I mean you can do it whichever way you like but you know I'm pretty sure I, I get the one in the park there's like one really annoying one in the park and it's like he's just like on sort of a hill and you need to hit it accurately so I find things like that really difficult it's kind of what you need to do. there's one of the stalls as I said the mission doesn't start until until you ram one so it'll be interesting to get through this mission <laughs> to see how I got through it anyway I should say uh, so I'm just driving around trying to remember the roads and everything see this is the one I find the most difficult the one in Belleville Park because um, See there's the road. There's the one road to Portland Just over there So we're gonna get this guy and then we're gonna go straight to Portland I'm gonna try anyway see I'm just wasting precious time here See you need to go left here and take the bridge into Portland and I struggled with this so much um, I did this mission over and over and I would fail multiple times because A I get blown up B I try and ram the stalls and nothing would happen so it's like you need um, a certain amount of speed and um, obviously pressure to be able to bang into it enough times so it, if you can do it with one quick shove then that should do it but it's never always that easy particularly when you're on a timer particularly if you're nervous or particularly if you think you can just kind of take your time which you can't you have to hurry up you have to be really quick you know because time is of the essence see there's one one in Portland or two I should say because I got the one in Bellevue because that's for me that's the most difficult and coming back I could have left it but it's like that would leave me five to do so I think I actually do this mission based on the strength that I actually got one in Belleville first so we're gonna get the second one in Portland now. and it lets you know once you've destroyed it how many how many have been destroyed and uh, see that all espresso stores in Portland are wrecked so now I have to go back to Staunton Island now and I've just got under just over six minutes I should say to do it uh, and it took me several attempts to do memorization um, I get completely lost here because I'm like where am I going where's the road back to Staunton Island things like that it's stupid see that I even wrecked my car a few times as well I'm trying to do it as you can see I've, I've just got no time so I basically take any vehicle I can I've taken a triad fish van. And look at that! I'm just I'm surprised I actually managed to do this mission at all. I'm trying to figure out where I'm supposed to go. And there you go! I've I've literally found the road back to Staunton Island, the bridge, the Callahan Bridge, and that's what I was struggling with finding that bridge. And um, that was one of the big things. I, that's why I would always fail. I drive around Chinatown. And I just got a terrible sense of direction. I knew it was near. Um, oh God, Trenton was it? I knew it was near then. I think it's Trenton, but I couldn't find it. I was terrible. Even though the map's there, I'm just no good at following it. But anyway, we're back in Staunton Island now, and I've got four more to destroy. So let's just go around and let's destroy them. And as I said, if you stop in this mission, then it's it lessens your chance of doing it. You've got to keep on the move as quickly as you can. So there's only four to, to get. 
Um, it sounds like a lot, but they're all placed in convenient locations, to be honest. Most of them. Right, we're going to get the first one, which is right here. And that's why I'm using a big vehicle, so I can just slam into it. And there you go, look at that. I'm on fire already. So I'm literally surprised I do this. So I'm going to use a van. There we are. I'm going to try and get the next load. I've just got over four minutes to do to this. It is possible. So I managed to do it with a few seconds to spare. There's two more. What really pees me off about this mission is the fact there's like two more and they're kind of apart from each other. They're not kind of in the same area. That's the most annoying thing for me. Um, I'm not a huge fan. Of, of things like that because it's like oh you've really got to play to the best of your ability and I'm like oh my god I really forced myself to try and play as good as I could and it was like just going nowhere I hate this as well because like it's another thing to ram and it's on the corner can you see that how annoying it is the fact it's on the corner there we are right and there's like one more to get here and once I've got this one more, I can head over to Shoreside Vale and get the two, because there's two more there. That is a pain in the arse. I'm going to say it's a real pain. It's like the most frustrating mission in the whole freaking game for me so far. So I'm not sure are the missions are going to be after this. Are they going to be easy? Are they going to be difficult? Um, I'm unsure. I should imagine they'll be a lot more tricky. They'll probably throw in some more timed ones. So I'm just kind of playing it by ear at the moment. Right, this is the last freaking stand and it's right in Tarrington, I think. And it's right, it's inconveniently placed. As you can see, I've got the police after me as well. I'm like, I don't even know how I do this, if I'm honest. There, I've rammed that. You can see my van's on fire. Now, I have a very limited amount of time now. Just under three minutes to get to the airport. And time is running out, so I need a car. So I need to find my way back to Bellevue and then get on the road. Oh, for God's sake. It's like the traffic just becomes more aggressive. I've said this before, the traffic becomes much more aggressive when you're on a mission. So luckily I I managed to pull it off. Alright, so we're going to go this way. I don't even know where I'm going at this point. So I, it's kind of luck that I actually do this mission. I don't, it's not really skill to be honest. Look, I just noticed the billboards. I recognise them, that's how I know that this is the way to the airport. And I've got, oh god, very limited amount of time to do this. I've got just over two minutes to do it. So I've got to, I've got to be on point. Have to do this. So I'm driving all over the place. Um, it's, it's very hectic. I'm on the wrong friggin' lane. I'm in the wrong lane, I should say. Is the bridge going to go up? Or will it stay? Because you got to watch out. Because there have been times I've been on this mission where I've been rushing through and the bridge is up. And I end up falling into the water. So I've just managed to avoid that. So there's just two more to do. And I need to do this. 